Just go ahead and, like I said, I know I have a specific set of slides in my admin C class that was associated with iTuning as well. Now, it might get a little deep into the admin side of things, but I think it would probably be a, a good reference to have anyway as well. So, um, I guess it's been a while since I opened that, that, particular, uh, that particular guy. Oops, I'm going to undo that. I didn't know what I just did. Uh, let me come back over here. My Word Merge Courseware. Here's my OPS2 class. Uh, here's the ref.1, 1.1 of it. Let me come over Right, so this is my admin two class. This we've got uh, we've got um, a particular chapter. I said it was based on the uh, best practices brief that's been uh, from one of the uh, main hype guys. This, since we're specifically talking about tuning, this might be a good chapter to go through as well. So it get, also gets into a little more of, uh, of some of the ways that you can uh, increase the performance in. Uh, in TES as well. But I said this does get pretty deep into the admin side of things. Okay, so there's ways that we can uh, we can change the way that uh, that Yarn queues queues are the way to provide resources to applications. Uh, there's uh, certain uh, specific things we can do in TES. Remember we said that uh, with TES we have those containers that, uh, that stick around. Right, and if we know that we're going to be running ad hoc queries on TES, we can make those stick around a little bit longer. So, so in between TES sessions and, and TES tasks that are run. And then we're going to cover some of the high properties that are associated with, uh, with increasing the performance of high as well. So the, uh, the, the main gist of this is that how do we get uh, our Hive to uh, be um, to, to be better at uh, processing interactive queries. So in an inter interactive query, is I'm going to submit a hype query, I'm going to wait for a response back, and I'm going to take a decision, respond to another query based on it. Okay, so batch-oriented operations, we're going to initiate a batch operation. It's going to be a complex, automated, multi-step process. Sounds like MapReduce. Right? And we're going to receive an output. Uh, interactive processing, though, I'm going to I'm going to do a very simple query. We're going to we're going to wait for that process to complete, and we're going to analyze the answer and, and decide what to do next. Right, and this is the direction that everything's moving from from a. Uh, uh, this is the direction everything is moving from a high perspective. And so we're going to talk about how we can take Hive from a batch-oriented uh, piece of software and turn it into an interactive piece of software. There's, there's specific best practices that we can do to help us with that. Okay. Hive is by default tuned for batch operations. Okay. Uh, based on ORC and TES and, and some of the other applications that we talked about, it performs interactive queries better simply by using TES. But there's different application and queue management strategies we can use to, to further enhance interactive query performance as well. Some things you can do from an administrative perspective. We mentioned this one before in our other chapter, increase HUS replication factor for frequently accessed data. Right? If we try to read data from a particular place and there's no room on that machine to process it from, we're going to actually have to uh, set it up somewhere else and move our data. Right? But if our data is already in another place, because we, uh, because we increase the replication factor, our odds of, uh, of being able to access that data local to where the data is actually increases. 
uh, based on the, uh, the, the latest uh, capabilities of Hive, you can actually implement Hive high availability. And the interesting thing about Hive high availability is it's an active, active type of uh, approach. Right? So you're going to have two Hive Server 2 instances, right? and you can also um, create Hive Server 2 instances, one for batch and one for uh, interactive queries, or one for uh, short ad hoc queries and one for long running queries as well. So not only can we implement load balanced high server twos, we can we can stand up high server twos specific to a particular type of query you want to run, and we can configure our our Yarn queues and our Yarn application queues to uh, to help you with that. And we're, we can also uh, 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 again play around with test container management settings. And, and, and let those uh, test containers um, uh, stick around a little bit longer because we're going to be fat fingering our, our uh, we're not talking about automated process, we're going to be fat fingering our queries and it might take you longer than 10 minutes to do that. And in that case, your test container will go away and you'll have to spawn a brand new test session when, the, uh, when you do submit your query. So pros and cons of each one of these, increasing your replication factor, you're going to you're going to take up more disk, but more replicas means a better chance to be able to spawn data locality. Okay. You can do this via the, uh, the ACMS services tab, right, in the replication. We can create multiple high server two instances, one for, I said, one for interactive ad hoc queries, and I can actually make that one highly available. Right? So, so you can load balance, it's active to active, you can load balance all of your short ad hoc queries, because there might be a lot of them, across two uh, uh, high server 2 instances, and then spawn a brand new high server 2 instance that's just doing your long running queries, that throwing more research sources at it isn't really going to help. So here's an example of a high server 2 that's doing ETL processing, and a high server 2 that's for your business intelligence function. Okay. Uh, each of them are going to have different settings, different settings for tests, uh, because of the way that uh, because of the way that um, we're going to be analyzing the data once it comes in. So this is another architecture or possibility to uh, to implement different high server two instances for different types of uh, analysis you're going to do. Uh, from a queue perspective. Right. Let's have uh, one queue for interactive queries and one queue for batch or long running queries. So you can pull all of your resources together for interactive queries. There's actually a high services tab, an interactive query session. You can specify the default queue. Or you can specify the queue that you want interactive queries to go to. Um, like I said, if you have you know, a wildly varying performance characteristics, right, it wouldn't be a, a bad idea. And I mentioned this before uh, to go ahead and you know, to go ahead and have a queue for uh, queries that are going to last less than 10 seconds, and have a different queue for queries that are going to last up to a minute or two. Okay, so we can specify, uh, we can specify um, the, the specific queue you want to use for interactive queries. And there's no reason why you can't uh, make this more complex. So configuring the container for TES. Remember, TES has, your, uh, um, has a, a worker node container that we send MapReduce functions to. Right? And if we're, if we're doing an interactive query and analysis, right, um, some of you might be really good SQL programmers, but it might take me more than 10, uh, um, more than 10 minutes. By default, says wait a minute of 10 seconds and a maximum of 20 seconds before releasing idle containers. So 
that if we have a uh, if we have a container right that we're not using it anymore, we're going to let it go. Oh, uh, we can increase the uh, the timing of this. Okay, interactive queries which users may take more time between operations have to reallocate containers more often. And increasing these timeout settings can improve performance. Oh, we can actually configure those settings in the advanced test site. This is what it looks like. So the uh, the um, Tez application master container IDO release timeout. We have all the timeout min and the timeout max. We can also uh, pre-warm and make uh, test containers available. Tests can be configured to pre-warm containers and keep a minimum number available regardless of the actual current usage. Now, these resources are common to this is these resources are not going to be able to be used by any of the else either. They're going to be reserved. Okay, so you can see that we can hold containers to reduce latency and, and specify how many contain how many test containers do we want to stick around? So that way, when we uh, when we send a request to uh, to Tez and, and it builds the DAG, it doesn't have to worry. We don't have to worry about it going out there and finding and and creating a new container. A finished Tez job, so the application master of, it, of, of Tez uh, waits 10 minutes for a new DAG to be submitted before shutting down entirely. Okay, we can change those settings and advance test site. Notice that it's by seconds, so the timeout seconds here. It's currently listed as 600, we can change that. Other considerations from a high tuning perspective, um, optimized performance uh, by setting the proper memory settings. Monitor, monitor, monitor. How well are you uh, parallelizing? How, were, uh, how well are you able to, uh, to locally analyze your data? What's your garbage collection times? Look at your join behavior. Are you, you know, are you making sure that you're you're getting rid of the the nulls before you do a join? Modify the query performance via high and test configuration changes. Use the OWASP file format. Use column based the um, the column based statistics and the column based optimizer. I've show, I've specifically shown you some of the benefits of those today. On a pretty small data set. Think about it. That was a pretty small data set. Right, only 8,000 rows. And we saw how much it uh, increased performance. I use partitions and buckets. Notice that a lot of this is the same uh, of uh, the same stuff that we covered before. We just got to know a little deeper of what you can do from uh, from an architecture standpoint as well. I'm not sure if there's a specific reference uh, in the, the documentation. I think there might be a, an actual high tuning guide that's out there in Google now. I'll, uh, I'll have to look and, and see if I can't find you that at the next break or something. 